Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India the lecture series in animal physiology. So, we are into the fifth week. So, today we will be having our fifth lecture of the fifth series. So, if you recollect in the previous lecture, we talked about uh, some series of neurotransmitters. I named some of them like glycine, glutamate, GABA, acetylcholine. So, now today let us introduce another interesting parameters. So, that this list of neurotransmitters is fairly huge. So, do not get bogged down by the range and variations of neurotransmitter. What is important for you to understand is a neurotransmitter as the name indicates, it is kind of a messenger. It binds to its receptor on the cell surface and it results in a cascade of uh, actions followed by that and for us most importantly in this case our concern is the way they can be classified is either they will be called as excitatory or they will be called as inhibitory inhibitory neurotransmitter excitatory, how they got these two names. So, as we have already mentioned a cell sits at virus 80 millivolt right, which is uh, negatively polarized with respect to outside. Outside it is far more positive. So, now say for example, a neurotransmitter if we call this a uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter, what this will do is it will bring down the membrane potential of the cell further negative. It means if it is sitting at minus 80 millivolt, it can make it to say minus 85 millivolt or even minus 90 millivolt. How you can do that? Just put the logics in place that can only happen when inside the cell you are increasing the negative ion concentrations. Fair enough? So, let us draw it that will help you one second to kind of appreciate what I am trying to tell you. So, here where we were. So, we have these different kind of neurotransmitters glutamate, glycine, GABA. So, now today we are introducing one more concept. So, we are into week 5, lecture 5. So, W5 L5, okay. So, neurotransmitters. classified into two categories excitatory excitatory and inhibitory now what i told you is that if it is an inhibitory neurotransmitter then if the cell is sitting, see this is y axis is giving you the voltage in millivolt, this is on the positive side, here on the negative side millivolt. So, the cell is sitting at somewhere around this, if I consider this as minus 80. Okay. Now, I say it by the action of a neurotransmitter, if it is a neuro inhibitory neurotransmitter, it will further shift it to the negative direction. It will make it say 
uh, minus 85 or something or minus 90 or wherever it is sitting. It may sit here, it may, it may be sitting here and it will become further negative. And what is the remark I used? To justify it, I told you that if this is the cell, it has negative ion, negatively charged ions which are in higher number as compared to outside. then such further negative polarization can only happen when I am increasing the negatively charged ions inside. And that is promoted by an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So, how it does so? When an inhibitory neurotransmitter say X comes and binds on the surface of the cell something like this, okay? it is binding it opens up channels which will allow the influx of the anions or negatively charged ions. So, this opens up a gate which allows the negatively charged ions to get inside the cell. And talking about these gates and the channels, they are very specific at times, they are very specific at times, they are non-specific. Okay. So, for the time being, for your basic fundamental understanding, if it is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, then on all likelihood, this is going to permit the inflow of negatively charged ions inside the cell. This basic fundamental should be clear in your mind. By the same token, if it is an excitatory neurotransmitter out here, then this does the reverse thing. What it does in the case of excitatory, if this is the baseline where I have shown the baseline minus 80, okay, excitatory one will do the reverse. It will make it more positive, inside will be more positive from its baseline. Okay? Again, from its baseline. If the baseline is sitting at say minus 40, it will become say minus 30. It is all relative, right? So, do not like get confused. Be very clear. It is always a very relative parameter. From this baseline, it will make it more positive. And how that is possible? That is possible when similar to this, if I compare this two situation, Comparing so in this situation, one second, positively charged ions move inside the cell by the action of excited in a neurotransmitter state, so Y. So, if Y binds here, then this allows the passage of something like this, right? So, in the light of this, if you remember where we digressed, while we started talking about the synapse, I told you I will have to explain you about neurotransmitters. So, in the light of this, if you remember I told you all or none, if I could change the membrane potential say from minus 80 to say you know minus 40 millivolt, say for example somewhere or other like this, then there is no stopping. This wave shoots up and comes back. You remember that? So, the binding of the neurotransmitter can lead to the generation of action potentials. So, these are those external things. Now, let us come back after giving you this brief aim. So, and as examples of inhibitory neurotransmitters, 
GABA is one such inhibitory neurotransmitters. Excitatory neurotransmitters are many like acetylcholine, glutamate which is a very prominent and based on that I have already mentioned there are neurons which are named as GABAergic, you remember GABAergic neurons, glutamatergic neurons, cholinergic neurons. So, cholinergic is a non-specific cation channel opener, okay. Glycinergic neuron, okay. So, similarly you have serotoninergic neuron which secrete serotonin, dopaminergic neuron which secretes dopamine, neuron. So, what I will request you, please do this simple exercise. Pick up any book, check all the different kind of neurotransmitters and classify them. Is it an excitatory or is it inhibitory? What it is, you know, which family it belongs to. It, it will help you to kind of figure out based on the basic knowledge what I have offered you. Now, let us go back to the synapse. I told you something about this part. Right, remember? So, I told you that there are these vesicles which travels out here and I have already told you that you know cells could be glutamatergic, gabargic, whatever. So, what happens at this synapse? At this synapse, once an action potential wave reaches this synapse, there are couple of reactions which takes place. But I will tell you the results first. First of all, you have to appreciate the result, then we will talk about the role of calcium and all other things. Okay. At this point, I will stop it, I will leave it there and I will tell you the what the end result happens. So, once the action potential reaches out at the step, what this neuron, what happens is certain unique flux of cations takes place and how it takes place will come later into it, okay, which are mostly calcium and this is all happening inside. Okay. This leads to these vesicles what you are seeing, these vesicles get opened up here outside like this and once they open up transiently, so these neurotransmitters are secreted by this particular neuron, say for example, if this is the sender neuron and for our study we are talking about the receiver neuron. So, at this location the neurotransmitters are you know given out. These neurotransmitters if they are excitatory then they will bind to this receiver neurons dendritic terminals, right. So, let me draw it again for you and may make more sense. So, say for example, this is the sender neurons axon and terminal and just for your simplicity I am keeping it very, very simple and this is the dendritic terminal of the receiving neuron. Okay. So, this is the sender which is in dark black and this one is the receiver. and signal propagation is taking place in this direction. So, uh, electrical wave traveled all the way in the form of action potential out here. 
So, you have a series of neurotransmitters laden vesicles which are present here. These are all filled with neurotransmitter. These black dots are showing the neurotransmitter laden vesicles. At this location, there is a flux of calcium ion. We will come later into that. But that leads to the opening of these vesicles outside and the neurotransmitters are secreted in this small cleft like this. There is a diffusion of neurotransmitter taking place here. Diffusion of neurotransmitter. Now, these neurotransmitter now binds to the membrane of the dendrite of the receiver neuron binding on the surface receptor of receiver neuron dendrites okay binding on the surface receptor of the receiver neurons dendrites now if this neurotransmitter is say for example if this neurotransmitter is excitatory then what will happen? This cell which otherwise is sitting, so if I keep a voltmeter with respect to this cell, what will happen? This cell is originally sitting at, the reading will tell you minus 80 millivolt, okay, or minus 70 millivolt, whatever, okay. Now, if these excited neurotransmitters bind to this a receiver neuron, what will happen? Its membrane potential is going to, if it is an excitatory, because of the influx of the positive ions here, because of the binding, this place becomes positive and it may even reach say minus 40 millivolt. And at this stage, this cell will shoot an action potential. And this action potential wave now from here will start to travel like this. Again the same thing will be repeated at its end. This is the most simplistic way you can understand it. Vice versa, if instead of this being excitatory, this is in inhibitory, then what will happen? This minus 80, from minus 80, it will go further down. It will become negatively hyperpolarized. It is already in a polarized state of minus 80. This will become negatively hyperpolarized. So, for this cell to shoot an action potential will be much more difficult, the second one. Now, with this very simplistic viewpoint, let us try to explore this picture in a giant network that is where the whole world is going. So, let me draw that giant network that will help you to appreciate what I am trying to tell you. So, say,
Okay. I am. Give me a few minutes. I'll be done with this. Okay. Let me number them. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see that at different level I have drawn them. And anyway, this goes on. Okay. On and similarly, this is received. Right. Now in this situation, say for example, this one shoots an action potential and this is excitatory. Then this excitatory neurotransmitter will provoke to shoot action potential out here. Second, another action potential shoot out here, it is excitatory. Another action potential is shoot here. But say for example, this neuron secretes an inhibitory neurotransmitter. What will happen? Out here, this action potential is going to, won't be shoot further. This will make this one secrete to go further negative. Whereas, if this one is excitatory, if this neuron 3, 4, 3 and 4 is 3 is E, this is I, okay, and this is E, okay. Now, this excitatory will further secrete another excitatory and suppose this is I, this one won't kind of you know damp down the signal out here. Similarly, the one which is out here, E, E if it is excitatory, it make it further excitatory. So you see now, here you got a chunk of certain X signal, X signal gets split up, okay. But now here you, there is a dampening of the signal and only part of the X prime is moving further. So imagine a vast network so, what you are seeing, there is a computation taking place of signal at different level based on whether the signal is inhibitory or excitatory. So, if I say this is say 20 and then these signals are split up to say, you know, 5, 7, 7, okay, 5, 7, 7, 14, okay, say 6, okay. Now, I am just giving a random number. Now, what will happen? This 7, here it will be say minus 1 because it is not no more transmitting it out here. It why it is or say plus one somewhere or other say for example if this one is say excitatory some or other this one the signal comes like this. So this will have a positive excitatory signal as well as a negative signal and based on the quantity of the negative versus positive it will decide what signal is going to go further. If the positives are more if the excitatory factor is more as compared to the inhibitory factors, then the excitatory factor will travel partly, whatsoever it can afford. If the inhibitory part is more as compared to the excitatory part, then automatically the signal will get dampened. So, this is on a most simplistic network, what I can tell you how these signals are being transmitted. Okay. So, now, in the light of this, I wish you people to stretch your imagination to think how a complex vast network is going to function. So with this, I will leave you here to ponder upon the role of these different excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters and how at the synapse the signal gets transmitted. And in the next class we will come back about these role of calcium and we will talk a little bit more about spatial and temporal summation of signals. Okay? Thank you. Thanks for your patience listening.